Hey everybody, welcome to Planes Over It, and we are doing the power plant series from the A320 uh, uh, technical series. And uh, today we're going to do thrust levers, fuel systems, and oil system of the power plant. Disclaimer remains the same: do not use any of this information anywhere uh, that you're learning in this course anywhere in practical application. So always refer to your manuals. All right. So thrust levers. I've already discussed thrust levers in a few uh, videos earlier. So, but I'll just give you a quick uh, review on the thrust levers. So thrust levers are present in the center pedestal of the aircraft and there are five detents not six okay the detents are toga takeoff go around flex mct flex takeoff and maximum continuous thrust climb that is maximum climb idle and max reverse thrust now reverse idle is not a detent okay and also just to remind you in the previous video i told you that reverse idle is having more thrust than the forward thrust okay it's reverse idle is greater than the forward thrust to help in braking efficiency another thing i want to discuss here is auto thrust operating range when two engines are operating the auto thrust will operate between idle and max climb it will be active but if it's a single engine operation auto thrust range increases from idle to mct okay that's all you have to remember about the thrust levers all right so next uh, fuel system now very important again a fuel system supplies fuel to the combustion chamber at a required flow rate, pressure and temperature. The fuel flows from the tank via the fuel pump unit and the fuel oil heat exchange to the hydromechanical unit and to the fuel nozzles. I will discuss this in the next slide here. The HMU is the one who is actually controlling which is con indirectly controlled by the FedEx. The FedEx controls the HMU which controls fuel flow to the engine combustion chamber, controls fuel hydraulic signals to the actuators, protects against over speeding. All right. So this is what the diagram looks like, the architecture. So this box here is the fuel pump unit. This box here is the HMU, that is hydromechanical unit. So the fuel comes from the fuel tank, which is apparently cold. Okay. So this fuel oil heat exchange happens. So you know it just there's an exchange of heat via the oil because of the oil. And then it goes to the filter where the oil, uh, the fuel is filtered for any contamination. And then a high pressure pump. Then from here it actually splits into two. Okay, where a filtered fuel goes through servo fuel heater. So this is for your uh, servo fuel heater. Actually, what it does is it heats the fuel to eliminate ice particles that might damage the the HMU uh, control in the servo valves. So this TM SV is torque motor and servo valves. So we'll talk about this one by one. And uh, some of the fuel also goes to the fuel return valve. That's a cold flow here. So this here IDG oil cooling. So IDG oil cooling is done by the fuel, which is actually cold. So the oil is then cooled for the IDG and cold fuel is added so that some hot flow only goes back to the tank so it's just not that the whole hot fuel will go into the tank so some cold fuel is added as well to maintain about 100 degree centigrade before it actually enters back into the tank so this tank actually outer tank wing for 320 wing tank for 321 okay now let's talk about the hmu now hmu is a hydromechanical unit it is basically a speed governor so it you know refines to provide automatic speed adjustments so it is operated using fuel uh, fuel operated servo valves now vsv is variable stator vanes which uh, i had talked in the previous video you can just go back hptcc is high pressure turbine clearance control actuator low pressure turbine tur low pressure turbine active clearance control and this is rotor active clearance control racc now vsv we have already discussed hptcc now hptcc is it's a, it's a control that gives clearance between the high pressure compressor for cooling the high turbine high pressure turbine case so it gives the clearance to the turbine which optimizes turbine performance and reduces exhaust gas temperature all right now lptacc that is low pressure turbine low pressure turbine active clearance control it is also it controls the low pressure turbine clearance by modulating the fan bleed air flow for cooling the low pressure turbine case so basically just to summarize in a way all these clearance control keep the turbine from a distance away from uh, actually hit uh, you know 
sc scribbing the cowling itself otherwise if you have the turbines will actually expand due to the amount of heat that the engine generates so in order to keep that cool and give a clearance between the turbine blades and the cowling itself these actuators are there which do the same now that is the role of the hmu so that hmu controls these motors and actuators rotor active clearance control it is the clearance between the rotor blades of the hp compressor and its stator case okay so this is done by the racc rotor active clearance control system vbb is variable bleed valves which already i told you about uh, in the previous video okay so these systems help in maintaining the it's a speed governor this whole thing is a speed governor now in case the engine is over speeding this bypass valve opens and the fuel is drawn out and sent back to the tank just to avoid any damage to the engine in terms of over speeding the engine and this fuel is then sent to fuel nozzles that is sprayed into the combustion chamber and there's the fuel flow monitor here on the ecam as you can see here now important things on this diagram are if you press this fire push button the low pressure fuel shut off valve will shut okay very important also if you shut off the engine master button engine master switch the low pressure fuel shut off valve will also shut and also high pressure fuel shut off valve both the valves will shut during the master switch but only fire switch will shut off the low pressure fuel valve low pressure fuel shut off valve okay so i hope this diagram is clear if you guys have any doubts just drop a comment so idg cooling system now idg is integrated drive generator so it is uh, providing you know um, electrical supply so some of the fuel uh, flowing out of the hmu goes to the goes to cool the oil systems of the idg it then returns to the fuel pump unit or to the tank the fuel return valve controlled by the fedec ensures that this flow is adequate fuel recirculation to the tank is inhibited that means frv is closed in the following cases when the engines are shut down during take off and climb if the wing tank level is below 300 kilos so the frv will be shut when there is fuel overflow in the surge tank and fuel feed is by gravity only so in these cases the fuel return valve will be shut and when fuel temperature in the wing tank is below is above 52.5 degrees i mean these uh, values if you can remember well and good otherwise it's uh, not really necessary now i'll talk about the idg here idg in cooling system we already discussed in the main uh, diagram here this whole thing is zoomed in that image so the cold flow is there and the idg after heating with the oil of the idg the fuel is also heated up because of the exchange so some fuel goes back to the fuel pump unit and some goes back to the tank now since this is hot fuel you don't want the hot fuel to enter the tank since it will be uh, vulnerable to any fire catching capacities so in that case some cold flow is also added to cool this fuel that is returning to the tanks and hence the idg oil cooling takes place because it's important to keep the idg oil cool since the idg is an important component on the aircraft so this is the same diagram here that is there on the bigger image all right so the oil system now pretty simple actually oil system lubricates the engine components it contains the oil tank the lube and scavenge scavenge pump modules the fuel oil heat exchanger the filter chip detectors pressure relief and bypass valves so what is happening here as you can see this is the reservoir here okay the oil reservoir and this is the oil tank quantity for the engine given on the ecam 9.5 quarts is the minimum and plus 0.5 quarts per hour is the per hour of flying so this thing extracts the oil pump so oil supply pump extracts oil from the reservoir there's oil filter if it gets clogged it goes via the bypass the temperature is measured first if there's oil is giving low pressure it shows a warning and the pressure is shown on the ecam so then it is given to the bearing and the gearbox where it lubricates the bearings and the gearbox and there are scavenge pumps which extract the oil and then it goes through the filter again main scavenge filter as you can see now scavenge filter again if it gets clogged there's an ecam warning and it goes via the bypass all right and then there is the servo fuel heater 
which is there on the same as you could see here i'll just show it to you again this is the same thing servo fuel heater fuel oil heat exchange oil input oil return so this is the same thing here oil input and oil return so the fuel is exchanged heat with this oil the fuel which is cold and the oil which is hot because of the uh, in it's passed through the engine it will exchange heat and cool the oil back and send it back to the reservoir all right the servo fuel heater is also used so that you know the ice particles are eliminated from the fuel all right so oil system is done as well so i think yes we are done for this video and uh, these are the quiz links you guys can also find them at the description and uh, oh yes we are doing live uh, poh is going live on facebook on 25th march 2017 at uh, 1600 hours that's the link for the event and that's the facebook page so do join us we'll have a good discussion on the a320 any doubts and suggestions and comments and everything so we are doing a live video so thanks for watching guys subscribe to the youtube channel if you like this video give it a thumbs up like the facebook page for regular updates do not forget to share this video comment below if you have any doubts i will surely get back and you can always keep in touch with me on the youtube facebook whatsapp email links mentioned on your screen cheers and happy landings guys have a great day take care bye bye